Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at making a full rig capture using Neural Amp Modeler, NAM. What is a full rig? A full rig is when you capture your amp, speaker, and microphone all into one capture. If you're looking to capture just your amp, then check out my how to capture your amps video where I show the process of capturing your amp and preamp. For this tutorial, we're going to be using Reaper. We're obviously going to need an amp. We're going to need the speaker, whether it's a combo or a separate cabinet. We're also going to need a reamp box. In my case, it's the Radial Pro RMP, which I modded to have Unity gain, but any reamp box should do. And we're going to need a microphone. I'm assuming that you already have an interface and have some basic knowledge of how to operate your DAW. I'm also going to assume that you have the trainer already installed. If you need assistance with that, I'm going to link to Steve Atkinson's, the creator of NAMM's video on how to set that up. Before we get started, we need to make sure that Reaper settings are correct for NAMM. We start by looking at the project settings under file and making sure that the project sample rate is set up to 48,000. I'm also going to go to device settings by clicking up here and making sure that my interface sample rate is also set at 48,000. I'm also going to set the block size low enough to get the least amount of latency without clicks and pops. For my system, my interface, that number is 64. Now we're ready to get started. We're going to start by making three mono tracks in Reaper. We're going to call this one Guitar BI. This will be the training file. And this would be the full rig capture. Let's set up the routing for these tracks. The first track is for your guitar. This is where we're going to plug in your guitar to monitor the rig before we capture. My guitar is connected to input one on my interface. So we need to set up this first track to look at input one by right clicking on the record button go down to input mono and select input one. We then need to take this tracks output to the reamp box, which is then connected to the input jack on the amp. On my interface, that is output number three. So I'm going to go to route button on the track. I'm going to uncheck master send channels so it doesn't send it to the main out. And then we're going to select output three under audio hardware outputs. We also need to turn on monitoring on this track. I do that by right clicking next to the record button and making sure that monitor input is selected. The first track is now ready. Let's give it a color to identify it easy. Now let's look at the second track, the training file track. This is where we're going to load up the training file for the NAM trainer. This track's output needs to be set to output number three as well, since that's the output that's going to the amp. To do that, we do the same thing as track number one. We go to route. Uncheck the master, send, and select output three on the audio hardware outputs. We then load the training file. I just like to drag it from my Windows Explorer. And then let's give it a color to the track. Let's see green. And now this track is ready as well. Now let's set up the last track. This is the track that's going to receive the outcome of this training file going through your amp. 
speaker, mic, back into your interface. And essentially it is the training file we use with the NAMP trainer. But first we need to set it up for monitoring. That way we can plug our guitar to input number one, run it through the amp, cab and mic. Make sure the mic placement is where you like it. Decide on a tone before we capture. My microphone, which is an SM57, is plugged into input number two of my interface. So we need to make sure that this track's input is set to input number two. We also need to make sure that input monitoring is on during the monitoring phase. At this point, we're ready to start dialing in some tones. I would start by record arming the first track. I also like to right click on the record button and make sure that record disable input monitoring only is enabled. That way we don't record anything on this track. It's just for monitoring. Then I also need to record enable record arm the third track, the return track. We're now ready to start dialing in your mic placement. So place the mic on the speaker and play around with the position until you're comfortable with the sound that you're getting. For me, I like to start where the cone meets the cap, right at the edge, and then go from there. After you place your mic, make sure you have healthy levels coming into input number two from your microphone into the third track. In my case, speaking around 7.8, just hot enough. So let's roll with this crunch sound from my Mesa Boogie DC5 channel one with the gain pool which puts it in crunch mode. Let's hear that one more time. Okay, so let's capture that sound. Uh, I start off by turning off the monitoring on the first track, on the guitar track. We don't need that track anymore. I then like to select the training file and go and right click on the timeline and go to se set selection to items. That will create a an exact selection of the training file. This is so that we can turn on auto punch on options. Make sure your record mode is to time selection auto punch. And that will ensure that I'm only recording the exact length that the NAM trainer wants to see. We don't want to record more than this trainer fire or less. I then make sure I'm at the beginning of the project and hit record. Now we're done running the trainer file through the full rig and capturing the result into the third track. We never color it, so let's color it yellow. I then like to normalize this output track so it's consistent with my other models. So you may want to do this step, but this step is optional. I like to right click on the item, go to item processing, normalize items. And then I choose for this one, negative four. It's usually between negative four and negative five for me. Let's do negative five. Then with the time selection still up here, we're going to export this file by going to file, render, source is gonna be selected tracks, the stem. So we make sure we select this last track. For the bounds, it's going to be time selection. 
make sure this tail it's off. We don't want extra information on the file. Another way to check that everything is good is making sure that this file is the time for the file is three minutes and 11 seconds. That is the length of the trainer file. We're going to go to browse on the directory. I'm going to choose the Reaper folder, the Reaper project folder. Make sure you give it a meaningful name to your capture, to your upper file. I'm going to call it Mesa Boogie DC5 Crunch FR for full rig. Make sure the sample rate is 48,000. Make sure channels is mono. And everything else should be default and click render. We're now ready to open the trainer. To do that, we're gonna open Anaconda. Then we type NAM to open the trainer. The input audio is going to be the version 2.0 WAV file trainer that you downloaded when you set up the trainer. It's the same file that we use on the green track here. For the output audio, it's going to be the file we exported from Reaper. In this case, it's the Mesa Boogie DC5 Crunch FR. For the training destination, I'm going to use the same Reaper project folder. You definitely want to check cap modeling here since we're doing a full rig. This is the main difference when you're making a, an MDI versus an, a full rig. I also don't like dealing with prompts, so I do a silent run. Then I go to advanced options. This part is up for debate, but I like to set up, I like to do 1000 epochs on my models. Now that we have this ready, we're ready to train the model. We just click on train and we let that process complete. It's gonna take a while, I'll speed it up and then we'll test it afterwards. We can now close Anaconda. We can now disable record enable on this track. We can go back to this one and change it to for NAMP, but it's probably easier if we just make a new track to load up NAMP. Can I go to effects? Look for NAMP. We're going to load up the file. That we created. We're going to record enable. For my setup, I need to raise the input to 1.8. If you would like more information on how to set up your reamp levels, make sure you check out my input levels video. I'll link it below on the description. Let's see what we have now. Cool. Well, that's it. This is how I go about making a full rig capture. If you're interested in making just the amp DI, make sure you check out my other video on how to do that. I'll link it down below. With that said, hope you guys have a great day and uh, may the tones be with you. <laughs>